guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I've said this in a number of different videos in the past that I am extremely inspired by Catherine from Delightful. Um, I really love her channel, I love her dolls, and for the past year I've been watching her Dragon series and the dolls are so cool. Like they came out fantastic, they look awesome together, and she inspired me to create my own dragon doll. Around the time that I decided that I wanted to make a dragon doll, Crystal's Fantasy here on YouTube actually asked me if I wanted to collab with her. And I was like, uh, yeah, you wanna make a dragon with me? And she was like, okay. And here we are today. <laughs> I'm going to link her dragon video in the description box. Definitely check it out. I just feel like she had a really unique like take on this theme um, and all her dolls look really cool. So I think you guys will just enjoy her channel. Picking a base doll for this was a little bit difficult because weirdly enough, I have a lot of scaly dragony dolls. Um, so I kind of narrowed it down to this create a monster lizard doll or maybe it's like snake doll i'm not really sure actually what this uh, green doll is and this create a monster dragon and i was kind of leaning towards the create a monster dragon just because i don't know if anybody else is like this but i've i have a dollar paint and it has like a certain theme and then there's a monster high doll with that same theme i feel like obligated to use that certain monster high doll so since there's a dragon create a monster i was like oh, i want to use the dragon create a monster for this dragon doll I put a little bit more thought into it and I mean this like lizard create a monster is kind of perfect for a dragon doll. It's a little bit stereotypical but just look at it like it has so much potential so I decided to go with that. These create a monster dolls are really easy to prep. Um, you just kind of like pop their heads off. They don't have a neck peg. They have like a little neck ball thing. <laughs> and it's so that you can like interchange whatever create a monster head you want to put on that body. I wiped her factory paint off with 100% acetone. One of the reasons why I was excited but intimidated to do a dragon doll is because I knew that it would push me to do body mods, uh, which is something I've been kind of avoiding because I just sort of assume that I suck at it. Also, I don't really like working with epoxy sculpt or I didn't like working with epoxy sculpt. I'm fine with it now um, after doing this project, but prior to this, I was just like, oh, I hate the texture of this stuff. Like, I just really did not like sculpting with it. I formed an armature wire for her horns. Something that bites me in the ass later is that it's not long enough so I couldn't stick it in the head but I tried to work with it anyway and it just made my life really hard, you guys will see. As you guys can see, I'm not wearing gloves while working on these horns and I don't wear gloves for most of this video. Um, there's a lot of conflicting information online about whether or not epoxy sculpt is toxic but I came to the conclusion I'm at the conclusion now that it's just better to be safe than sorry. So towards the end of this video, I start wearing gloves. And from now on, if I'm using this stuff, I'm going to wear gloves. I made her some ears while I was making her horns. I was sort of debating back and forth whether or not she should have ears, but it just felt really weird. She just had like a giant space on her head. Um, and some dragons do have ears and I think they're really stinking cute. And she kind of reminds me of Yoda with her ears. So I'm here for it. I sanded down the ears and the horns. I sand outside normally, so I don't really have any footage of that. Also, who wants to watch someone sand? That sounds so boring. To add some details onto the horns, I used Ladal clay. Ladal clay is a clay that a lot of BJD sculptors use when they make dolls. Um, and I was still at a point where I hated epoxy sculpts, so I just figured adding details with Ladal clay would be a little bit easier than using epoxy, at least for me at this point. I did a base coat of black acrylic paint on the horns and then I dry brushed on some gold metallic watercolor paint on top of that. I also painted her ears in a light green. To get the ears to attach to the head, I did a little dot of hot glue and then I went all around that with epoxy glue to secure it in place. I 
I tried to do the same thing for the horns that I did with the ears, but it was just not working out. It was frustrating as all hell. Um, they were just way too heavy to like have the epoxy glue hold them. Just use a wire and stab it through your doll's head. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. Sometimes in life I make bad decisions and this doll was just a lot of, it was a lot of trial and error, a lot of bad decisions. <laughs> I wanted to make it look like the horns were growing out of the doll's head, so I formed a sort of platform with epoxy sculpt. I also used epoxy to create more of a smooth transition from the ears to the head. At this point, I showed my husband her horns and everything, and he was like, they're kind of freakishly big. And I was like, they kind of are. I don't disagree with you. So I took my Dremel and I cut them down. In case you're wondering, the epoxy glue definitely did not hold them through this. I had to re-glue them back on because they popped off. <sighs> Just bad decisions. Me and my bad decisions. <laughs> After gluing them back on, I went and I painted over everything that I would sculpted. Finally, we're onto the face up, so I sprayed the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask, and then I get started. I wanted her look to be almost a little bit intimidating, not super cutesy, so I drew in the eyes a little bit smaller than I normally do. I wasn't really feeling how the paint was looking on top of the vinyl, where the ears are and where the horns are, so I was trying to kind of blend it a little bit with a darker green. I add blushing all around the face with pink and red pastel. To shade around the eyes, I'm using green pastel and a sort of stamping motion, and this is just so that I get a more precise application of color. As per usual, we're giving this doll some veins, so I'm just doing some branch-like pencil marks around the eyes and the forehead. The freckles are back. I haven't done a doll with freckles in so long for a while. I was literally like just constantly doing dolls with freckles, but I'm splattering her face with dark green. And if there's one that I don't really like, I just take a Q-tip and wipe it off. I thought the freckles would just like suit her look. The molding on this doll's face and body is really, really nice, so I'm going over it with pencils and pastels to emphasize it. I 
I decided to give her a gradient from orange to yellow for her eye color. To get a more intense color payoff on the eyes, I take a Q-tip and pastels and I just tap the pastels onto the eyes. This also helps get a gradient, so it just gives me a smoother gradient from the orange to the yellow. Like all my dolls, I'm smothering this doll in Perlex pigment as well. To give her a darker, more intense look, I tap a little bit of black pastel between her upper and lower lip. With a wet white watercolor pencil, I just add highlights around the face or around her eyes, her lips, I'm just doing little brush strokes. A lot of dragons are portrayed with slits for pupils, so that's what I did with this doll. With really light yellow watercolor paint, I add a like ring or halo around her eye so it looks like it's glowing. I painted a bit of gold metallic watercolor paint on top of her pupils just to give them a sort of highlighted effect and make them stand out a little bit more. And I really, look at that. That's nice. <laughs> When I'm drawing in the lower lashes, I'm using a V shape. I went a little bit too ham with the lower lashes, so uh, they look a little bit ridiculous, whoopsie daisies. Um, but I'm also using a super duper sharp pencil. When you're doing lashes, you need to use a super sharp pencil because this is doll scale and you're drawing on hair. So if you're using anything that's even a little bit thick, it's gonna show, it's not gonna look really sharp and that's what you want. So just make sure that your pencil is like super duper sharp. A detail I've been loving lately is taking a metallic watercolor pencil. In this case, I'm using dark green. You would use whatever corresponds with the theme that you're working on. Um, but I'm just adding like three little flicks on the upper and lower lashes on the outer lash line. And this just creates sort of like a cat eye look, but it also gives the eyelashes a little bit of depth or at least it looks that way. And I just think it looks really good. I gave her some gold freckles all around her face. 
Another detail I've been loving is adding lines of rose gold to the lips and dots of rose gold to the waterline. Also, just saying, I decided not to give her eyebrows. If you're like wondering, like, uh, where are these eyebrows? They ain't coming because um, I just thought that she would look better with no eyebrows. And I haven't done a doll with no eyebrows. And honestly, I kind of dig not having eyebrows. Like, if I could pull off that look, I either want the thickest of eyebrows or no eyebrows. Like, I don't want any in between eyebrows. To kind of break up the mass of lower lashes that I drew and painted on, I'm taking some white watercolor paint and I'm just adding some quick flicks of lashes to that lower lash line to break it up. To gloss the lips, I'm using Vallejo Gloss Varnish. This is the result of her face up and I really dig how she turned out. She was just one of those dolls that was like pretty pleasant to paint. I didn't really have like a hard time with her on her face. There's tons of areas in this... A whole repainting process that I had a hard time with but her face wasn't one of them we're finally on to some body mods so I am cutting her legs I am doing the digitigrade legs and I was using delightful's method that she used in like basically all of her dragon videos this method centers around making joints out of popsicle sticks by attaching popsicle sticks that I drilled holes into on the upper and lower part of the legs and then screwing a butt and a butt <laughs> wait is that what it's called a nut <laughs> not a butt a nut and bolt sorry i'm tired a nut and bolt into those popsicle stick joints I actually wanted to show you guys this thing. It's a nail dust collector that I bought off Amazon. Um, I bought it for if I want to sand inside or if I want to like cut stuff with my Dremel because um, that collects a lot of dust. It basically just like sucks dust in and I feel like it's pretty useful if you do doll work and you're doing a lot of body mods or even minimal body mods because like I feel like doll work just requires quite a bit of sanding a lot of the time even if it's pretty simple stuff like what I generally do. I've seen this articulation method work out for quite a few people and I think it is a really art like effective articulation method um, but unfortunately <laughs> it wasn't working out for me. Um, I think it was on me though because I think I was doing something wrong. Each time I would try to put the joints together so attach you know, the upper leg and the bottom leg and screw them in with nuts and bolts, the popsicle sticks would snap. And this happened like four times and I just got very, very frustrated. <laughs> so I decided to try something different. I have these spare monster high legs laying around because I did a mermaid doll and I ripped her legs off. So I figured, hey, let's try using these. Basically, all I needed from those legs is that knee joint, so I am cutting the knee joint out with my Dremel. I'm using my Dremel and I am drilling a hole into each part of her, basically the lizard part of her legs, the upper portion and then the lower portion. I'm drilling a hole so that I can put a little bit of wire into the hole that I'm drilling and that can also go into the knee joint that we took from those blue legs and this is basically just creating a little bit of structure when we go to attach it so that it's not just sort of I guess like loosely on there it just gives a little bit more strength basically. I'm originally going in with super glue to attach each part of the leg but once I have that initial attachment, I'm going in with epoxy glue just to strengthen up the bond. I 
had to take her claws off so that I could like screw it into the part that attaches to the foot. So I'm just reattaching them with hot glue and then I'm going over where I glued the claws on with epoxy glue just to make sure that it's like a stronger bond. We gotta make these legs look a little bit less um, like Frankensteined up. So I'm taking my epoxy sculpt and at this point I actually started to like it. Like while working on the legs is when I was like, oh, I kind of actually understand this stuff and I don't just hate it and think it feels like squishy boogers. Um, so I was going over each part of the leg that I like attached to the knee joint and I'm basically just really smoothing that out so that you can't see that like crack. Um, where I attach them together and then I'm going in and I'm starting to sculpt out the claws of her feet I looked at a lot of reference for this. I basically just googled dragon feet um, I lost a bit of articulation while trying to get it to aesthetically look like dragon feet, which I'm kind of okay with It's unfortunate that I lost articulation in her toes, but I don't know I'm kind of not that bummed about it. I'd rather they look aesthetically pleasing then have articulation and like the joint looks a little weird. I really wanted her feet to have tendons, as weird as that may sound. I feel like tendons really make it look like the feet have weight to them. Like they're like straining, but in like a strong way. <laughs> I'm just over here talking up tendons. Anyway, um, so I'm just attaching snakes of epoxy onto the plastic. To bring the scaly texture that she has all over her body onto the epoxy that we sculpted on, I'm actually taking that Create a Monster Dragon doll and I'm unattaching her leg, which by the way, like you can detach them or whatever. I'm not breaking her. Um, and I am getting that scaly texture that she has on her leg because it's exactly the same as the lizard girl that I'm working on. And I am smushing it into the epoxy so that I can basically take the pattern of the scales from the leg. This is the end result of her legs and I really like them even though she lost some of that claw articulation she can still wiggle her claws which I think is kind of cute. <laughs> I'm painting over all of that epoxy work with acrylic paint and for some reason I'm still struggling with this green shade I just cannot like match it completely. It's like good enough though. I went in and I blushed the body as well and I'm basically using all the tones that I used on her face on her body. The blushing of this doll was a little bit more intense than I normally do. Like generally I'm kind of like I just blush the body really fast but I wanted to really capture all the texture from her scales because I think it just looks really good. So I'm going over it with some green pastels and then I'm also um, basically dry brushing the scales and bringing out the texture that way. I put her head back on her body and she's so cute. I just really like her big old horns with her big old ears and her big old head and her big old feet. She just, I don't know, maybe I'm biased a little bit, but I think she's kind of cute. I had some silver and white acrylic yarn already like straightened out and prepped and stuff in my hair bin. So I decided to use that for her hair. I'm just creating wefts with Elmer's glue. I painted in her hairline with silver acrylic paint. This is for two reasons. One, I had to figure out what her hairline was because I've never done a hairline like this before. So I wanted to sort of figure out what it is. And then also if there's any bald spots wherein I'm attaching the hair, this um, makes it so that they're less noticeable. I wanted her hair to look slicked back, so I didn't want her to have an identifiable part. So I'm basically doing that by gluing the yarn um, that I brushed out all along her hairline. When I'm done gluing on the hairline, I am gluing on yarn wefts how you normally would, so up her scalp, one on top of the other. I wanted her to have some ear fluff. I thought it would be really cute. So I am gluing some hair in that area as well.
I trimmed her ear fluff with my scissors. I would recommend after you trim it with the scissors to go over it with an eyebrow razor if you have one. I don't have one though, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> This is the end result of her hair and I dig it. I just really like her hairline. Like it's kind of weird. It reminds me of a Klingon from Star Trek. She almost looks like she's balding, but like she's cute with her bald self. I decided to add some copper leaf to her horns. Honestly, purely for aesthetic purposes. I just thought it would look really cute. I then wrapped copper wire around her horns because she's a decorative dragon, you know. I feel like if dragon ladies were a thing, they would totally decorate their horns. To make the wings, I am using vinyl, so I'm basically making pretty simple wings. Like, they can flap back and forth, but they don't have, like, a ton of articulation. Um, I'm sketching out each piece that I need for the vinyl, and then I'm attaching the vinyl by ironing them together. To give it that limited articulation and also to attach it to my dragon's back, I'm sandwiching a little bit of wire between the front and the back part of the wing. So the gold and the duochrome vinyl. I wanted to make her some spikes for her wing and also her shoulders, so I'm making those out of epoxy sculpt and I'm finally wearing gloves! Yay! <laughs> it only took like the entire video. <laughs> I went over each spike that I made with a black acrylic paint as a base coat and then I went over top of that with some red metallic watercolor paint. To attach those wings, again, I'm using the real MVP. I've been, I used up so much epoxy glue for this, seriously. Um, but I am attaching her wings into the holes that she actually already had for wings in her back. By the way, I think I've been calling this doll like a lizard lady creative monster for this entire video. She's actually a Gorgon creative monster, which is interesting. Um, she's basically like a Medusa doll. All right, let's talk about the nightmare that this tail was. So the first thing I tried to do for this tail was I actually tried to beat it. Um, I bought a bunch of like dragon scale beads and I was gonna beat it, but it just didn't really go with the aesthetic of the rest of the doll. So I went to my local fabric store and I bought some sequin fabric and I was like, oh, I'll make a sequin tail, but like that also didn't go with the aesthetic of the doll. So now I just have some like ugly ass lime green sequin fabric laying around that I'm probably never going to use. But anyway, um, then I was like, all right, let's make a more simple tail. So I took this stretchy yellow fabric and I made this tail and I showed it to my husband and he was like, honey, that's ugly. <laughs> I was like, you know what, babe, you right. It kind of is. <laughs> So now we're on to take four. Um, I'm actually cutting the tail because I wanted my fluff back. I was like, listen, <laughs> I'm gonna need this for something else. I figured that the big old honking crazy tail just really didn't go with this doll because she's kind of like, she's not a very, I don't know, big dragon. Like she has smaller wings. And yeah, I figured a smaller tail would kind of suit her better. So I am painting a gradient of green to darker green on that stretchy yellow fabric with acrylic paint. I then layered metallic paint on top of that, going from a darker green to a lighter green metallic. I'm trying to make this tail look like it goes with the rest of the doll, so I'm splattering on 
bits of the darker green paint and I'm also adding similar tones that the rest of the body has to the tail. So tones of gold, stuff like that. I paint a scaly texture onto the tail once I am done basically outlining each little scale with dark green acrylic paint. I'm going in with the gold watercolor and I'm adding a bit of a highlight to one side of each of the scales. I sew the sides together good side to good side and then we flip. I sew the end of the tail to a wire and then I begin stuffing it with some yarn fluff. After it was all stuffed, I sewed the top of the tail together. I decided she should have like a fluff at the end of her tail because it would just kind of go with her like hair and the fluff of her ears. I'm cutting some yarn and then I am uh, tying it to this thing, which, what did people say this was? It was a handbag a handbag handle, so I'm tying it to this thing, um, and then I'm brushing it out with a cap brush. I wanted this yarn to keep its waviness, so I'm not straightening it once I'm done brushing it out. I'm creating wefts like I did earlier, so just adding a bit of Elmer's glue to the top of each one of these yarn pieces. To attach the yarn wefts to the tail, I'm just wrapping the yarn wefts around this bit of wire at the end of the tail. I'm covering up the glue part of the weft with some yarn that hasn't been wefted. So I'm just adding some Elmer's glue and then I'm just placing that bit of yarn on top of it. And it makes it look like the puff is basically growing out of the tail. Then we're just trimming it down with some scissors. Again, if you have eyebrow razors, I would recommend using that, but I don't. I used to, I don't know where they went. To attach the tail to her butt, I'm using some more epoxy glue, and this is actually newer epoxy glue because I went through like a whole tube of epoxy glue for this project. In my defense though, there was only like half of the glue left anyway. I decided she probably shouldn't be butt ass naked, so I made her a pretty simple dress. I hemmed each section of the dress, so the neckline, where the top and the bottom of the front of the dress connect, the skirt, and also the back. I sewed the top and the bottom of the dress together, sewing them to a ring to attach them. I then sewed the dress together at the shoulders as well as the side seam. By the way, I don't know if anybody's ever used this fabric before to make a dress, but it was not having it. It just it was so fragile, like every time I'd sew it, it would just like have holes or start to break apart and it was just not, it was not fun. I gather stitched the middle of these gold pieces of fabric. I then sewed them to the dress at the shoulder. With that, the dress is actually done. I didn't show it to you guys on the doll like I normally do because the dress was so fragile that I was kind of scared that if I put it on the doll, it would just break. Um, so I only wanted to put it on the doll once. I wanted her to have a belt of potions as you do when you're a dragon lady. So I took these potion bottles that I have and I put a little bit of glitter in them. And then I took some metallic watercolor that I like really watered down and filled them up with that. I 
I attached her potions to a chain that would act as a belt. With that, she's actually done. And I really hope that I did the dragon theme justice. I really did try. Um, I was a little intimidated at first to make this doll just because it is so out of my comfort zone, but it was really fun by the end of it. And I just feel like I learned some new stuff by working on this doll. I want to thank Doll Eightful for inspiring me to create this doll. And you guys should definitely check out Crystal's really awesome dragon that I think is really cool. Like, I'm excited. I'm genuinely excited to watch her video. Um, that's linked down below in the description box. I also took some photos of her with my fairy and my mermaid doll. They're the fantasy click. I just, I don't know. I think they look really cool together. And honestly, I don't know about you, but I kind of stand my mermaid and my dragon together. I think they look so cute. By the way, I've been thinking about starting a series, but I don't really know what I want to do for a theme. So if you guys have any recommendations or suggestions, leave those down in the comments. But that's pretty much everything, guys. Um, if you guys like this video, like this video. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, subscribe makes me happy. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Stay safe. Bye!